Donald Trump files the pre-motion to recuse Judge Juan Mercan from the case in the Alvin Bragg prosecution taking place in New York. Trial right around the corner, April 15th. We are ready to go to cover that. But the question is, is the trial going to go? We know that there are a lot of questions about the judge's daughter, Lauren, and the fact that she has worked for numerous Democrats, you know, like Kamala Harris, who happens to be the opponent of Donald Trump. Oops. So that means that we have questions about the judge's bias and whether he can be impartial throughout this entire trial. And of course, we've already seen the judge and in our opinion come to the conclusion that he wants Trump convicted immediately which is why he's making the rulings that he is that are all seemingly adverse to Trump but the question now is about recusal and whether he's going to stay on the case so we're going to take a look at what Trump is asking for remember this judge has already now gagged Trump twice and told him you can't talk about my daughter even though you know she may have raised 93 million dollars for people like Adam Schiff and others but it is something that is totally outside of this case and not even relevant to the administration of justice in my courtroom, it's beside the point, never mind the fact that it is someone working against Trump, who happens to be his daughter, okay, and who's also talked to her, and daddy has talked to daughter about this, where they talk about Trump's tweets, as we talked about in a prior show about the podcast. So this is the pre-motion to recuse, okay, Trump has had enough, all right, trial is right around the corner. Trump said, enough of this judge, we've had it. April 1st, this one goes in to the honorable pff, Juan Mercan, judge, Supreme Court. Trump's defense, this is a very very short filing, signed by Todd Blanche, who's a Nicholas, Blanche Law, says, all right, dear Judge Juan, says, your honor, we respectfully submit this pre-motion letter seeking leave to file a motion for recusal. So we would like your permission to file an actual motion. Pursuant to judiciary laws based on changed circumstances and on newly discovered evidence. Remember, they've already asked for Juan to be recused from this case, and that was denied. They said, here, in August 2023, when we asked you before about recusal, Judge Juan reasoned that recusal was not warranted because President Trump had presented, quote, only speculative and hypothetical scenarios. The court said, oh, I've made up. I haven't seen anything about my bias or my hackery at all. Come back when you got some evidence. Guess what? We're back. Knock, knock, knock. The scenarios identified by the defense have come to pass. They said, we told you about this. We warned you. We asked you to recuse yourself. You didn't. You said, come back with evidence. We're here. Your Honor, President Trump is the presumptive Republican nominee for president in a 2024 election. And your honor's daughter is an executive and a partner at Authentic Campaigns Incorporated. Now, I also want to pause on this briefly. There is a lot of actual misinformation that is out there that I believe is being thrown out by the left to just throw muck in the water so that you can't really see what's happening here. Like, for example, we know definitively that that X account, the previous Twitter account, was the judge's daughter. All right, now the court says, no, it's not hers, and we lost control of it, and someone else is posting there. Right, they didn't even say any of that. It was like, we don't, it's not ours, whatever. All right, we know that it is the judge's daughter. At least I conclusively believe that based on the evidence that I've seen from Laura Loomer's account. And go take a look at it. You can see the picture of the judge's daughter standing up, giving a speech at a tech conference where the sign behind her says, Lauren Mershon, and then puts the X account link there, right? Follow me here. So it's her, right? But the court comes out and they kind of, maybe it was hers at some point, but now it's not hers and we don't really know whose it is now. And so it's all, so then the news takes that. It's all fake. No, 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 no. Okay. So there's a lot of misinformation, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's intentionally trying to defend this judge and his hack daughter. Now this is being submitted, not in an article. All right. This is being submitted by two lawyers who are licensed and are officers of the court, right? So this is not like a blog post somewhere. They're saying, look, this is our research. This is what we found. And what's so insane about this is this is going to the judge. It's going back to the judge himself, Judge Mercan, saying, your honor, your daughter works at Authentic Campaign. So he's like, yeah, that's true. I get their Christmas cards. Bah. Here's to another year of success, grifting off the government and recontributing that to Democrats, whatever. So as recently as February and March, 2024, that is last month by just a few days, Authentic Campaigns, where your daughter is an executive, Authentic has used social media to market its connections to President Biden and to VP Harris while deriding President Trump, judge's daughter, executive at a company that's slamming Trump. Now, Authentic and your honor's daughter, called Lauren, are making money by supporting the creation and the dissemination of campaign advocacy for President Trump's opponents and his political rivals and the Democrat Party. Now, it can no longer be ignored 
ignored, says Trump's defense, that authentics your daughter's commercial interests are benefited by developments in this case that harm President Trump's penal interests and divert his efforts from running his leading campaign from the presidency by requiring him to prepare and to sit for trial during the general election. So VP Kamala and Shifty Adam Schiff and others are pushing, right, theoretically, pushing money to authentic. Authentic is making a ton of money. The daughter's being benefited. And the judge is working in the court of law in the same interest as the daughter and has an actual, you know, both have a benefit from Trump being undermined. And there will be people that say, Rob, you know, it's a daughter, okay? It's very disconnected. We say, what kind of father are you, huh? If you wouldn't do something to benefit your daughter, like you're not gonna run an errand for a friend if it's gonna help your daughter out in the long run or whatever it is. Like you don't do things to support your daughter. Do you do things against your daughter's interest? Huh, I don't even have a daughter, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't do that. So you work in conformity with your family interest. We already know the judge is biased because he apparently has complained to the daughter, this daughter who talked about this on a podcast, that he didn't like Trump's ex posts, didn't like him tweeting, said that they were unbecoming of the presidency. Now, here is the defense. They say the trial in this case will benefit authentic, the judge's daughter's inauthentic company, financially by providing its clients with more fodder for fundraising. They've already been grifting on the back of this. Authentic will make more money by assisting with those communications. And your honor's daughter, Lauren, will continue to earn money from these developments by virtue of her senior role at the authentic company. Now, the ethics opinion that this court relied on to deny our prior recusal motion, it emphasized the ethics opinion said, quote, we see nothing in the inquiry to suggest that the outcome of the case could have any effect on the judge's relative, the relative's business or any of their interests. Okay. Now the court declined to share its inquiry. Don't even know what that was. We see nothing in the inquiry. And so the defense is like, what? What inquiry? The heck are you talking about? Now the court declined to share what the inquiry was, but they basically said that if the judge finds Trump guilty, it doesn't benefit the daughter or something. Now the court declined to share how they came to that conclusion, but any such omission can now be addressed. Doesn't matter how they got it. Let's talk about it now. According to filings with the Federal Election Commission, Authentic, the judge's daughter's company, has received millions of dollars in disbursements from entities that were associated with Trump's political rivals since the indictment was returned. Millions. Now, some of those funds were paid to Authentic by entities associated with legislators and PACs that have used email and social media to solicit contributions specifically based on this case. Okay, so like this criminal case with Judge Juan. Thus, there is strong evidence that Authentic has used this case to make money. They write email campaigns, right? They market to raise funds. So they reference the case that daddy's on and then raise money on the back of that. How inappropriate can that be? Now, those benefits and the ongoing financial interest cannot be ignored, right? Again, it's the same conflict. If Judge Juan Mercan dismissed this case, well, then there goes their fundraising opportunity, isn't it? Gone. So how can he do that to his daughter when they're literally making millions of dollars that were associated with Trump's political rivals that all have an interest in a stake in Trump being prosecuted? They are salivating to say that Trump is a convicted felon. They're like, oh, it's any day now. Now, compounding these issues, Judge Juan imposed a gag order on Trump that restricts his ability to engage in campaign speech. He can't engage in it and we can't receive it. And the court is considering expanding that prior restraint further. Of course, they have done that now. Now, in addition, the file appears to have made extrajudicial comments about the case while failing to rule on a pending defense request to file a motion for an adjournment, which we read here, based on prejudicial pretrial publicity. So the judge, in other words, is leapfrogging this. The court appears to have made extrajudicial comments about the case while not even ruling on our request. Now, apparently this comes from the Hill. Court responded and said that that's not our daughter's account. That's not hers anymore. We don't know what happened to that one. Yeah, right. So last week, the court used the Office of Court Administration. So Judge Juan is now in cover-up mode because they know they're busted. So he's going to gag Trump from talking about it, but we're not stopped from talking about it, to issue a statement relating to an ex account used, quote, at some point by your honor's daughter, right? Yeah, it was hers. They agree, right? It was hers. Now, as public scrutiny on these issues has increased, strangely, the account in question appears to have been closed to the public, huh? And so too has Authentic's ex account. Weird. So the criminals are covering up the crime, thereby limiting Trump's ability to investigate these issues. Just like when we saw Angeron move the cameras in the courtroom around, right? You know, don't want to see what he's doing with his law clerk there. 
she sat on the same bench with him, you know, he couldn't really see their hands. I don't know. So right next to each other throughout the entire trial. Strange. So the judge is now gagging Trump and using other entities of court administration to spread their propaganda and their fake news to try to muddy the waters. Now, under these circumstances, Trump's defense says, your honor has an interest in this case that warrants recusal, judge. You gotta go. Under the rules, there is an unacceptable risk that the court and your family relationship will influence your judicial conduct. Because if you dismiss this case, then your daughter is not going to have opportunities to write email newsletters for Adam Pencilneck, who was censured, by the way. Wonder if she includes that in her little notes. And the court's impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Absolutely. And so therefore, President Trump respectfully requests permission to file a motion in support of these arguments that includes briefing and evidence by Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. So, Judge, we want your permission to file a more substantive recusal motion. Do we have it? Yes or no? Signed by Todd Blanche, Susan Nicholas from Blanche Law. And of course, BlancheLaw.com is where you can go find some of their work. Now, they try to cram as much as possible into this one motion, right? Very clear. Trump's team is signaling clear. We know she worked for authentic campaigns. We got it, right? That's something that we feel confident in and you know, saying to the court, saying that they've made millions of dollars in money for entities associated with Trump's rivals and that the court administration office is now acting as a propaganda arm of the judge himself, right? Like the judge's personal interests about the daughter of the judge, not even the judge. This is not a statement about the judge. This is a statement about the judge's daughter, huh? That the judge is now co-opting other court institutions to advocate for on his behalf. So that's a conflict of itself. Did he get permission from the chief justice? Is that it within judicial ethics for a judge now to be protecting his daughter, to be acting as the PR wing for authentic in their account? They can deal with their own response, all right? And we'll see what the judge says in response. So of course, we're going to be covering this. Hopefully we get the permission to at least see the next step from Judge Juan Mercan. But here's Eli and CNN. Now they play this game of patty cake where they sort of, you know, sit around and just support each other and the judge. Yeah, judge is great. He's doing a great job. Yeah, whatever. And I want to go through this because I was listening to this. It's just ridiculous. But watch what happens here. They're going to say that Trump being gagged is still something that protects Trump's free speech, even though he can't talk about that daughter at all under the new gag. And you'll listen here to this woman. She'll say that Trump made a true social post. And then Eli is going to come out and say, see, he still has free speech. But none of them or Trump are mentioning the daughter, which is the elephant in the room, or as we can say, the Democrat operative in the room who is not allowed to be talked about. Here's CNN. I think Donald Trump's post just now is exhibit A as to why the gag order is perfectly fair and appropriate. Because in this statement that we just saw from Donald Trump, he goes off. He goes off on the judge. He goes off on the charges against him. He says it's unfair. He says people are biased against him. And you know what? Under the gag order, he's allowed to do all of that. He didn't have to hold anything back. He went on an angry rant and that's allowed under the gag order. What's not allowed, what is now off base and should be off base is attacks on jurors, on witnesses, on court staff. And now as- Wait a minute. So he can't attack Michael Cohen, but Michael Cohen can attack him. They're going to point to this statement. See, Trump has a ton of free speech, but Trump isn't allowed to talk about the daughter, as you'll see in that statement. ...of the expanded order on family members. So there are boundaries here. Donald Trump can say quite a bit, as he just has done, but he can't step over those lines. And I think it's a perfect example of why this gag order is both necessary, but also fair and respectful enough of Donald Trump's First Amendment rights. And just fact check this part for it. I cannot talk about the corruption and conflict taking place in this courtroom with respect to the <laughs> to a case that everyone, and then he goes on. Yeah, incorrect, because he just did it, and he's allowed to do that. I mean, what Donald Trump... Is so they're saying, see, that's enough. You can just say it's corrupt. Just say it's corrupt. That's enough. So your statement that there's corruption going on perfectly. See how much free speech you have? So generous of Judge Juan Mercan to give you that. And they say, no, 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 my friends. Free speech is the only mechanism by which you can root out the corruption in the judiciary, right? That's why we have it. It's why it's the First Amendment comes before the Fourth, Fifth, and the Sixth. Because when the state is corrupt, you have to expose it to have a correction in the system, or you've got to rally people to your place to your cause so that you can change the system. Either there's a correction in the court or you rally Congress people, right? You rally your citizens to protest this case and act accordingly, right? Vote to change the system, change the laws. So everything they can talk about, everything except the only thing that matters, which is the judge's personal bias with his daughter. Is allowed Thanks, to guys. do under the gag order is to say essentially what he just said. He is perfectly within his rights to say this judge is biased against me. He 
he's perfectly within his rights under the gag order to say, this case is unfair. He can say the DA has bad motives. What he cannot do is say things that endanger the process beyond that. He cannot attack jurors, can't attack witnesses, can't attack the daughter's judge. So again, I think it's a nice example. The trick before the judge in any gag order is balancing the defendant's First Amendment rights. You do have broad First Amendment rights with the need to run an orderly trial and protect the process. And again, I think this posting as aggressive as it is, I think is a very good example of why the gag order strikes the right balance. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It strikes a balance that serves the government, serves the judge, because Trump is not allowed to talk about and expose the corruption of his daughter. But you heard there at the end when he's saying, you know, we're striking this balance between the administration of justice, the order of the courtroom and so on. And this is the exact same thing. It's just a different application layer. So they come up with these institutional phrases, you know, protect democracy. And then that is their excuse to rig elections, to, you know, lock you down, whatever, to spend money that we don't have. You know, the list goes on and on. We got a whole list of things. To censor you is the big one. To shut you up, to protect democracy. This is dangerous to democracy. And so the government is now enabled to protect democracy. What does that mean? Whatever they want. Same thing with administration of justice. Okay, the same thing is happening with Trump. They are censoring him. Administration of justice is the new protect democracy for our terms here. They are allowed to censor. They're allowed to prosecute. They're allowed to get unlimited funding. They're allowed to orchestrate political attacks all in the name of the administration of justice. Trump gets gagged. Trump gets censored. Meanwhile, Michael Cohen can go run his mouth all day long. Jack Smith gets endless government funding. Meanwhile, Trump has to raise funds and many people have to support him all across America, right? They get to prosecute people because they hold the prosecutorial power and it's all done in the name of orderly administration of justice. It's the same thing. It's the same scam. So we're going to see here what happens with this. The judge, of course, is not going to recuse himself. That is not going to happen. We're going to be here covering this, my friends. Trial is right around the corner. And so thank you for subscribing. Thanks for liking this video, inviting someone you know or love to come over here and join us when we go live and so that they can see what the heck is going on here with Judge Juan Mercan and his Democrat daughter. We appreciate you checking out some of the links down in the description below and becoming a member at watching the watchers.locals.com where we have member only streams in the morning. We talk about a bunch of other stuff that we can't get to here. We have a great community. We'd love to have you come support us over there and back here on the next one. Thank you.